Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. In today's video, we are checking out the Kindle Scribe because it has finally received its first long awaited update. It was promised to go to, to arrive earlier. Well, end of February, better, better late than never. Before we dive in, an info on basically how to get the update onto your device. Well, the preferred way is to just wait a little bit and then see. Uh, it should arrive automatically to you because it rolls out kind of gradually. But if you are very, very impatient, then you have the option of actually manually downloading the .bin file from the Amazon site. And then you can simply plug in your uh, Amazon Scribe to the computer. You transfer the bin file onto it, like no subfolders or anything, just into the root itself. You eject the device as a drive from your computer computer and then you just start initiate the restart of the device contrary to what Kindle's instructions are it will not start automatically it will not allow you for me at least it didn't allow me to go to settings and then uh, device and then update that was still grayed out the only thing the only way that actually worked was to initiate the restart and on restart the device finds the bin file updates itself and presto you got your update. I'm going to provide the link where you can actually get the update file from in the description of the video so that you know where to head to. And now let's see what the first update brings to Kindle Scribe. All right so Kindle Scribe is finally getting a first update and the update is 5.6.1.2 and um, it has a couple of new features but it's a very very welcome thing to kind of see that uh, they are actually delivering on the promises they made and the new features are well let's start with this because it's already here new screen savers that are designed exclusively for Kindle Scribe and they basically randomly will turn on every time your device goes to sleep it will just simply cycle through. I haven't really counted how many of them. So there's plenty of them and they're kind of nice. And I think that they are uh, nicely displaying the lovely, lovely display of the Kindle Scribe. So this is something that I actually like. The only thing that you need to know in order for these uh, screensavers to work, you need to disable the uh, reading cover uh, thing. So the display cover feature, you need to turn it off. So the way that you do it is actually wrong what they described in the release notes so you need to go to settings then you go to the device options and then the first option up there is display cover right so that's something that you can simply turn off and then your screen savers will work automatically then the next new thing has to do with the management of the notebooks themselves you remember how i said it was like hey nice you can actually make a folder but you couldn't make subfolders well somebody has been listening because indeed it was completely ridiculous that you couldn't have a folder structure to organize and to manage your notes so what they are saying now is that you should be able to create folders inside folders let's see so i create a subfolder so this is my level one all right can i go further yes thank you normally so we can have level two and hopefully there isn't a limit there's going to be a limit at some point because of the path and how long uh, how many characters the path can have but you know as as long as you have a couple of uh, levels of subfolders is it's more than good enough and the next thing that also in relation to this is that you can also move folders into other folders via the move option accessible by tapping on the overflow menu over the folders cover. So I would say that that's again kind of confusing what they're saying because you just tap on the menu icon underneath the cover or underneath the folder. So you can permanently delete, you can rename it and you can move it. And the move function works basically like this. So I can move this one over here. And now my level two folder has been moved over here. Can I long press? Yep, you can long press as well to expose that menu as well. So 
finally we are starting to have like the bare bones functionality is getting there into the scribe granted this should have been part of uh not even alpha this kind of functionality should have been there for 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 proof of concept level of design let alone a release candidate but all right <laughs> at least we are getting and i i really don't understand the aspect of hey really let's release this and not even have a folder structure but now we do so that is good then the next thing has to do with the notebook itself so you remember how it was basically impossible to navigate and to get to a specific page well they have uh, addressed this however it has been addressed in an extremely clumsy and uh, not a good way so you can jump to a page but the way to do it is tap once to expose the menu tap second time to get the settings then tap third time to go to page and then type in a number of the page without knowing which page you are on at the moment right? So you should know in relation to where I'm at, right? So why would I need to remember that I'm on page 20? Am I on 20, 21, 22? I don't know. I've been flipping around, but this one is not telling me any of that. So uh, strike number one for this implementation. Strike number two is you need three taps to access it, which is like completely ridiculous. So, okay, let's go to page number, uh, I don't know, 14. All right. So how should it have functioned? Well, you know that you can tap down here and you have page 14 out of 32. Wouldn't it make a heck of a lot more sense that you just do a long press here and it pops up the window? Like, how easy would that have been? That you're just going here and it's like, hey, I just need to navigate, long press, and then you get this number this thing and it tells you also which page you are currently on right current page and then go to current page number go to page and enter a number simple as pie living with this it's not what i would call convenient and also uh, there's still no proper page management here we're just talking about or notebook management we're just talking about the most basic of the basic functionalities that should have been in this software in the proof of concept version not an alpha not on beta and most definitely not as a release candidate so hooray we get to go to page but its design is uh, a d at best if i would grade it because it does function but it's it's not covering all of the necessary functionalities what should have been is much easier functionality for example long long press and shows as i mentioned but also you would need uh what would have been very nice as well is to have a notebook overview with a preview of pages and things like that so for example how do i know which page do i want so for example i could type in 22 and if you know that you want 22 you just go go but if you're not sure you might have a preview button here as well and then you click preview and it shows you a little preview of the page and then you can see oh that's not the one that i want to go to and then you find the one that you want to go and that's that so i mean yes it is implemented and now you can finally go to a page but it's it, it leaves a lot to be desired and there's still way 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 more room for improvement on that one particularly and finally we have new brush options or new pen options and we have a pen a fountain pen and a marker and a pencil and each one of them has five levels of thicknesses and this actually is quite exciting so let's zoom in so they can show you what it looks like all right let's start with the pen this is a pen brush feels and looks that's not an s great 
it does it really does feel and it's nice and smooth and i think that that super speed of this this display and the device is really really something that you can feel instantaneously then the second one would be the fountain pen this is a fountain pen looks wonderful really does feels and looks absolutely wonderful then we have a marker this is my marker nice bold again extremely responsive even though it's thicker super fast as well then we get to the best of all which is the pencil the graphite pencil so let me just show you proper tilt support and not like on books tab where you don't have control and you don't have proper control of intensity this has very very nice level of control and combined with this fantastic display i have to say that this graphite pen is the first one actually so far that blows the remarkables graphite pen out of the water because this feels absolutely fantastic you have excellent control and the tilt support and this fantastic pen that comes with the scribe along with a very exceptionally good uh, pressure sensitivity control this is probably the best graphite pencil, not probably, this is the best graphite pencil that I have ever used on a digital e-ink device thus far. So, um, so far the remarkable one was the one that you were going for and that just kind of worked. But also what I would like to kind of point out is the performance improvement because these are new features, right? but um, it also has performance improvements and updates and things like that. I mean, this shading here is absolutely phenomenal. The level of control is, yeah, yeah just on another level. And, uh, you know, books kind of doing what they're doing, it's just kind of doesn't really work. And they've had years to figure that out, that they're just not prioritizing it, I guess. This shows exactly how this kind of a pen should be uh, developed. So let's try it a little bit thinner just to see. Oh yeah. And then you can just add tiny little details in different angles. I mean, the versatility of the brush is just so good and it captures that natural fade out. If you can see here, basically as you have a stroke different types of strokes with different intensities and it's capturing that as you would normally have with the graphite pen absolutely spectacularly good pen on the uh, kindle scribe really really amazing well Okay, mixed bag as far as I'm concerned. Um, we got subfolders in subfolders and folder organization. Whoop de doo. I mean, it should have been there in the first first place. So that's not a new feature. That's just completing the work that should have been done in the first place. The same goes with the go to page. That is, and I've expressed my opinion. That should have been there in the first place. And the way it's implemented now is sufficient but no more it's not even good or very good nowhere near excellent it's just sufficient you you know you get a pass the new covers i like them i think it just adds a new kind of flavor to your device and it's something that i personally do like not a big deal but it's a nice flavor to the device but the new pens overall i know that i focused mostly on the graphite pen because it is truly a spectacular graphite pen but combined with the performance of the device and everything the fountain pen is also phenomenal and everything so that gives me hope that they might just might be taking 
their device seriously. And I just hope that we see more effort and more quality uh, that they've shown here with the implementation of the pens, because that's of the highest quality. It's really, really good. But that quality doesn't really extend to the user experience, user interface, and mainly the user experience. Those pens, primarily, again, those are your tools that you're going to use on this tool, on this device. For me, that is the biggest value of this update, and that is done exceptionally well. So does this complete the whole Amazon Scribe and now it's great? Well, no, but it's a start and it's a very decent start. Uh, I hoped to have seen more, more improvements, more, uh, more things that are kind of done properly, but hopefully we will see improvements in the reader aspect as well. So for example, that you can actually annotate PDFs, not just the converted files, because that's one of a huge, huge problems. Then the entire infrastructure has a ton of problems as well. Sending the files and receiving the files, exporting the files, managing the files. It just seems that they were not ready. They haven't prepared the Kindle infrastructure for the Kindle Scribe and they underestimated what that uh, entails, actually. So that's what it seems like. But on the plus side, it seems that they do have a darn good uh, software developer team on, on their hands, which is to be expected. And uh, according to those brushes, if those brushes are anything to go by. So there's hope yet for the Kindle Scribe. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description down below. If you like what I do, you can also head out to mydeepguide.com slash shop and check out the My Daily Organizer, which is a hyperlinked PDF file that covers all of your personal, professional, yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily uh, organizing or journaling needs. And it's helping out thousands of people across the world. So you can also find in the description below the uh, link to the My Deep Guide, My Daily Organizer playlist, where you will find a ton of videos that will show you exactly what My Daily Organizer is, how it works, and then you can make an informed decision whether that device, uh, product is for you or not. As for My Daily Organizer or MDO and the Kindle Scribe, does it work on Kindle Scribe? Yeah, partially. When you buy MDO, you will get the Remarkable Books and Supernote versions, and only the Remarkable version will work mostly okay when it's converted on the Kindle Scribe. The PDF versions work perfectly fine. Any of them, when they're just as PDFs, work perfectly on Kindle. But the problem is that Kindle cannot annotate PDFs. Not something that they tell you in their promo material. Actually, they tell you the opposite. So instead, the only thing that you can annotate is their conversion and their conversion process is sloppy and inconsistent and not good. And it can't handle bigger and more complex documents, especially the hyperlinks. I just can't format it correctly when it converts it. So that's the problem that Kindle Scribe has. However, quite a few users have reported and I have personally also tested the remarkable version of MDO works 99.5% uh, excellent on the Kindle Scribe. So if you're interested, that's something that you can check out as well. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.